Protect mowels are tubular fittings used to protect temperature sensors installed in industrial processes. A mowel consists of a tube closed at one end and mounted in the process stream. A temperature sensor such as a thermometer, thermocouple or resistance temperature detector is inserted in the open end of the tube, which is usually in the open air outside the process piping or vessel and any thermal insulation. The process fluid transfers heat to the thermal wall, which in turn transfers heat to the sensor. Since more mass is present, the sensor's response to process temperature changes is delayed. If the sensor fails, it can be easily replaced without draining the vessel or piping. To be representative of the average temperature of fluid, the thermal must extend a few percent of the inside diameter of the process pipe or vessel. A thermal is typically machined from solid bar stock and gun drill to ensure a long straight bore that closely approximates the diameter of the installed sensor. A thermal is typically mounted into the process stream by way of a threaded, welded, sanitary cap or flanged process connection. The temperature sensor such as a thermometer, thermocouple or resistance temperature detector is inserted in the open end of the thermal and typically spring-loaded to ensure that the outside tip of the temperature sensor is in metal-to-metal -metal contact with the inside tip of the thermal. Thermodynamically, the process fluid transfers heat to the thermal wall, which in turn transfer heat to the sensor. Since more mass is present with a sensor well assembly than with a probe directly immersed into the process, the sensor's response to process temperature change is slowed by the addition of the well. Since the mass of the thermal must be heated to the process temperature, and since the walls of the thermal conduct heat out of the process, sensor accuracy and responsiveness is negatively impacted by the addition of a thermal. To be representative of the average temperature of fluid, the thermal must extend a few percent of the inside diameter of the process pipe or vessel. A rule of thumb that is sufficient for most industrial applications is to ensure that the thermal projects five times its own diameter into the process plus the length of his sensing element. So, for a grounded thermocouple spring loaded into a thermal with a 1 inch diameter shank and a tip thickness of 0.25 inch, a typical immersion length would equal 5.5 inches. Materials and construction, the thermal protects the instrument from the pressure, flow-induced forces, and chemical effects of the process fluid. Typically a thermal is made from metal bar stock. The end of the thermal may be of reduced diameter to improve the speed of response. For low pressures and temperatures, Teflon may be used to make a thermal. Various types of stainless steel are typical, with other metals used for highly corrosive process fluids. Where temperatures are high and the pressure differential is small, a protection tube may be used with a bare thermocouple element. These are often made of alumina or other ceramic material to prevent chemical attack of the platinum or other thermocouple elements. The ceramic protection tube may be inserted into a heavy outer protection tube manufactured from silicon carbide or other material where increased protection is required. Flow forces Thermals are typically installed in piping systems and subject to both hydrostatic and aerodynamic forces. Vortex shedding is the dominant concern for thermals in cross-flow applications and is capable of forcing the thermal into resonance with the possibility of fatigue failure not only of the thermal but also of the temperature sensor. The conditions for flow-induced resonance generally govern the design of the thermal apart from its pressure rating and materials of construction. Flow-induced motion of the thermal occurs both in line with and transverse to the direction of flow with the fluid forces acting to bend the thermal. In many applications the transverse component of the fluid forces resulting from vortex shedding tends to govern the onset of flow-induced resonance, with a forcing frequency equal to the vortex shedding rate. In liquids and in high-pressure compressible fluids, a smaller but nonetheless significant component of motion in the flow direction is also present and occurs at nearly twice the vortex shedding rate. The inline resonance condition may govern the maldesign at high fluid velocities although its amplitude is a function of the mass damping parameter or scruton number describing the thermal fluid interaction. For drilled bar stock thermals, the most common form of failure is bending fatigue at its base where the bending stresses are greatest. In extreme flow conditions catastrophic failure may occur with bending stresses exceeding the ultimate strength of the material. For extremely long mowels, the static component of the bending stresses may govern design. 
In less demanding services, fatigue failure is more gradual and often preceded by a serous sense of failures. The latter are due to the acceleration of the VMAL tip as it vibrates, this motion causes the element to lift off the bottom of the VMAL and batter itself to pieces. In cases where the acceleration stresses have been measured, sensor accelerations at resonant conditions often exceed 250 gs and have destroyed the accelerometer. The natural frequencies of VMAL bending modes are dependent upon the dimensions of the VMAL, the compliance of its support, and to a lesser extent dependent upon the mass of the sensor and the added mass of the fluid surrounding the VMAL. The ASME Performance Test Code PTC 19.3 TW2010 defines criteria for the design and application of VMALs. However, these VMALs must be manufactured from bar stock or forged material where certain dimensional requirements and manufacturing tolerances are met. Coatings, sleeves, velocity collars, Special machine surfaces such as spirals or fins are expressly outside the scope of the 19.3 TW standard. Standardization, a widely used code for VMALs machined from bar stock and includes those welded to or threaded into a flange as well as those welded into a process vessel or pipe with or without a weld adapter as the ASME PTC 19.3 TW VMALs standard. See also, bending, Timoshenko beam theory. Vibration. References, ABHM Hashimian, Sensor Performance and Reliability, ISA 2005 ISBN 1-55617-897-2, Hamilton, Jeff 1997 Thomas W. Curlin and Mitchell P. Johnson. Practical Thermocouple Thermometry. Research Triangle Park, ISA. Pages 79 Euro 85. ISBN 978-1-937560-27-0. J.V. Nichols Dia White, 2nd ed., Traceable Temperatures, John Wiley & Sons, Limited 2001 ISBN 0-471-49291-4, page 136, Johnson, Mitchell P. and Gilson. Alan G. Do your vowels meet the ASME standard? Flow control. 18. External links. PTC 19.3 Committee. 1. Mal census.